Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into my podcast. We've been covering the Ukraine war. And today, uh, this is Danielle. She works for my law firm. And we're going to talk about one of the large nuclear plants in southern Ukraine uh, that's under target and it's been shelled in the recent days. And so thank you so much for tuning into our uh, little uh, news bits. But we thought this was uh, pretty important because it's going to change uh, the nature of the war. Thank you, Justin. Justin, I love these little adventures you take us on. Um, I rely on Justin for all of my world news these days. Um, today, he thought we could bring you some news um, about a place called Zaporizhia. It's, we had to pr practice pronouncing it because trust me, the way it's written is not how it sounds. So Zaporizhia is um, a nuclear plant in Ukraine. It's one of the largest nuclear plants. And Justin is gonna talk to you a little bit about today, a little today about how the the war in Ukraine right now from Russia um, could affect this nuclear plant, um, it being a nuclear disaster if it were to be hit, and what that means for the Ukraine, Russia, and possibly the entire world. So Justin, I'm very excited to hear um, the information you have for us today. Well, the United States Secretary of State, Ant Antony Blinken, He's actually accused the Russians of using the power plant as a nuclear shield. In other words, the Russians are gathering behind the power plant and building a lot of their forces because if the Ukrainians fire on the Russians, they may hit the power plant, uh, which would be a terrible accident, as Danielle has alluded to. It'll be a nuclear, a huge nuclear accident. It's actually one of Europe's biggest nuclear power plants, and it's one of the biggest in the world. You can see it behind me here, and it was constructed in 1980, and, and it has six reactors, and it was, all of them were connected in 1995. So it, it was built during the Soviet era, and it has th these, what you see behind me is these pressurized water reactors, and uh, they can produce power for up to 4 million homes. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really a big power source there in Ukraine. And it's on, you see this uh, river back here? This is actually a river. It's not, it looks like the beach or something. Or um, it's actually on the south bank of the Dinope River. And it's on the southwest city of Zaporizhia itself. And it's a very strategic position, both for the Russians and Ukrainian forces who've been contesting a control of this area. And you'll see how the power plant, it uses pressurized water here to, to transfer heat away from the reactor and then slow down the neutrons to enable uh, uranium-235 to continue its chain reaction. And if the water is cut and the auxiliary systems uh, such as the diesel generation generators, they'll fail to keep the reactor cool and a nuclear reaction would uh, heat up very swiftly within the plant, which would result in uh, hydrogen being released from uh, this is what they call the zirconium cladding and the entire reactor could have a meltdown. So yeah, I know I know that's a that, that, that's a lot. Well, no, I mean, it's a very good, detailed, easy explanation to understand. Um, by the way, you nailed your first pronunciation of Zaporizhia very correctly. Oh. Well really? done. Thank you. Um, Justin, I just had a thought while you were saying that. I mean, I feel like Zaporizhia is probably like one of the biggest elephants in the room in this war as far as, you know, it makes me wonder from the Russian side when they're sitting in their war room having these strategies, you know, what are we going to do about Zaporizhia? You know, are we going to try to avoid it and just, you know, or is it, are they saving it for like the finale? So what do you, do you have any knowledge from what you've read or learned about what the plan is for this? I mean, this nuclear plant has some pretty big potentials in this war. Do you have any idea of what direction Russia is going to take with that? Are they going to just, are they going for mass destruction or are they trying to dance around it, I guess, is where I'm going with that. Well, that's where I was going to go next. If there was a nuclear accident, uh, we're not quite sure, accordingly to the laws, 
uh, who would deal with it during a war. And so, I mean, we've got a wartime situation and we'll have a nuclear emergency. So that's, it's, it's really a, a conflict of laws. It's a gray area. I mean, right. especially who would mobilize all these tens of thousands of people that would be affected, including getting the equipment there and the emergency vehicles to the site. I mean, right now it's actually occupied and guarded by Russian military units, but I, I don't know if Russia is playing, you know, a, an act of mass destruction. Uh, Russia knows um, the plant was actually struck in March, and uh, but there was no radiation leak, and all the reactors uh, stayed intact. And okay. of course, both Russia and Ukraine blamed each other for 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 the strike. Uh, in last month in July, Russia said Ukraine had repeatedly struck the territory of the plant with drones and missiles, and also. Uh, they said kamikaze drones had struck Russian forces near the plant. Uh, recently, on August 5th, the plant was shelled twice, uh, power lines were damaged, and an area near the reactors was hit. And Russia said that the Ukraine's 45th Artiller Artillery Brigade uh, also struck the territory of the plant with 152 millimeter shells uh, from the opposite side of this river that you see. So they're shooting across the river and hitting, hitting the plant. And, and uh, Russia also said that they fired at, at the plant uh, with rocket propelled grenades. In August 6, the plant was shelled again, possibly twice, and an area next to the dry spent nuclear fuel storage facility was hit. And of, of course, the uh, Ukraine news said the opposite. They said Russia fired the rockets at the plant. I made a mistake when I previously said about the previous incident, it was the 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 Ukrainian newspaper uh, that said the Russian forces hit the plant with rocket propelled grenades. And then, of course, the Russian newspaper said that the Russian forces uh, hit it with a 220 millimeter rocket launcher. Uh, August 7th, yesterday, this plant was shelled again. And Russia said that the Ukraine hit the plant, uh, damaging the high voltage line. And then, uh, of course, the Ukrainian news said that Russia had hit the plant. So either way, we're getting a lot of shelling at the plant, which is pretty scary. I'm trying to hold back a, a chuckle because it really does, it's interesting talking about nuclear disaster and the Russia said Ukraine's doing this and Ukraine says Russia is doing this. It reminds me, I'm not even kidding, of being in one of our mediations or <laughs> litigations in the courtroom. Um, because you know it relates to divorce is a nuclear disaster, and there's a lot of he he said she said. So just kind of the parallels made me laugh. Um, yeah, I'm just interested if it's if the ax if the accidental nuclear disaster is actually accidental or on purpose. I guess that's really what I was, which no one knows, I suppose, until it happens. If it happens, um, whether it was intended or just collateral damage so I guess time will tell um my thoughts I don't imagine Ukraine would purposely you know cause harm to their own nuclear plant um but you also don't I mean maybe the reason there was no radiation leak was to create a distraction which is why they they know their own nuclear plant. So they created a, what appeared to be an attack that didn't actually cause any major um, nuclear destruction. And that's, you know, just kind of what that was about. So it's it's just all very interesting to kind of see the strategy and um, war games are something else, I'll tell you. So anything else that you want to share on the topic? Well, that's an issue. It, or that's an interesting issue, Danielle, for speculating uh, about the the uh, deterrence uh, strategy that Ukraine may have. I failed to mention also this plan I was reading about it early on in the war. Uh, after invading Ukraine on February 24th, the Russians immediately took control of the plant in early March. So I would surmise if, if we are going to speculate on who was the cause of the fire, the recent fire, yeah, it could be most likely Ukraine, they could be either causing a distraction so that they can uh, uh, move their forces uh, while the Russians are tied up with putting out the fires at the plant. And then they, they could also uh, be uh, I mean, 
firing at it because Russia is right behind it. So, you know, they, they, Russia's, like I said, using it as a, a border uh, in order to uh, protect. I mean, they're shooting across the river, but it is a very uh, big site and it, 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 it can act as a barrier to, uh, to any uh, missiles or anything. So, but it, it's hard to believe though that the Ukraines, I mean, on the other side that the Ukraines would shoot at their own power plant. So, so it is a mystery, I think. If they did, and they clearly, if they did, understand that these are just theories, conspiracy theories. I have no opinions or, you know, really like firm, you know, you did this, you did that. I really don't want any Russian or Ukraine drone showing up at my house saying, hey lady, that's not, you know, stop spreading misinformation. But, you know, if Ukraine did do that, it's a pretty um, awesome, you know, distraction technique to, take the one thing that is the scariest thing and do it yourself and in such a way that it doesn't cause mass destruction. It just is, um, it's a pretty forward tactic, but I would imagine an, an effective one perhaps. Um, so just it, fascinate, it fascinates me for sure. The psychological, the psychological part behind it and the strategy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, we, you know, the hard thing, we don't really know what, what is going on with the war. It's not a clear, it's kind of like the Vietnam War. Uh, I mean, it's not guerrilla warfare, but uh, we have all these different highlights here and there from social media from both sides of the war. So we really don't know a lot of what, what is going on. So, but uh, this was a really interesting area and a, a topic that I thought that we could talk about. So I hope you've enjoyed our podcast. Feel free to shoot us any questions, comments. Thank you so much for watching today, Danielle. Thanks for joining in and for your thoughtful commentary as well. It's fun to debunk the, the uh, war with you. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Bye.